This is your diamond insight for tonight of ESCOM's electricity scandal. Since we're neither the conduit in which electricity from ESCOM was passing, nor energy experts in Zesco who were receiving the power, we can safely conclude that we will never know whether the electricity did kick into Zambia's power lines. But what we know is that the Zambian government paid 20.5 million US dollars to ESCOM of South Africa for the importation of 300 megawatts for a period of a month. We also know that ESCOM refused to release any of its electricity to Zambia until a full payment was made. In December last year, our Energy Minister Matthew Nkor was always at pains in explaining the progress made towards the importation of power from South Africa's utility company. The accusing fingers towards Mr Nkor's alleged failure to be on top of his game came from all angles and we doubt whether he was sleeping at all. In Parliament, Minister Nkor was afraid of points of order while outside he feared the probing questions from men and women holding microphones, pens, cameras and notebooks. The minister was only let go after he announced cementing a power purchase agreement. But even before this was done, the government under the PF was advised that ESCOM was not in a position to supply and deliver power because it was also facing similar challenges as our ESCO. With the digital space very much open, we were able to Google and know that ESCOM was subjecting its customers to over 10 hours of load shedding. Why then did our government force ESCO to import power from a utility company which did not have the commodity? Now we are being told ESCOM breached the contract of supplying power to Zambia. That almost three months after Zambia paid the $20 million, ESCOM still owes Zambia $5 million in electricity importation costs. That ESCOM was supplying power between 22 hours and 05 hours in the morning, which are not peak hours. That our government will continue waiting upon ESCOM to supply the remaining megawatts of electricity until this money is exhausted. However, we can also question our government whether this money paid has not been swallowed in the debt we owe ESCOM. We have said that we are not energy experts, but we doubt very much that this electricity ever came to run our industries. In our considered view, we would rather demand an immediate refund of the $5 million from ESCOM than get lost in the technicalities of how electricity was being transmitted from South Africa. If ESCOM failed to supply electricity to Zambia as agreed, then we advise government to demand for a refund and the Attorney General to quickly take up on this legal matter. Instead of paying ESCOM the $20 million, government could have used it to sort out some of its financial challenges. The $20 million is our money and we need to demand full value of our money instead of allowing this electricity importation saga.